Well, anyways, thank you so much for coming and taking time out of your personal busy schedules to be with us tonight. If you don't know, we are called South Bay First Thursdays, and our events usually take place on the first Thursday of the month. We are a monthly educational series, so we try to bring topics that are relevant to you, uh, primarily topics that affect the Asian American community and the Asian Pacific Islander community here in the South Bay. Uh, today, I just wanted to go over the order of events. So we've got a little bit of a late start, but we're going to start off with a panel discussion before we have a panel of experts who uh, work with volunteers all the time. And they're going to be telling you a little bit about their organizations as well as what they like to see in volunteers and what they don't like to see in volunteers. Uh, it's important. <laughs> So today's topic is community service, and we, like I said, we have an expert panel with us. Um, I'd like to introduce the panelists. I'll go one by one. The first one is Miriam from Freedom House. Yay! We also have Sheila Rivera from ours, Asian American Recovery Services. And then we have Eva Yamamoto and Julie Hubbard from UIKai. Oh, my Yamamoto, sorry. <laughs> Eva is her mother that's in the back. <laughs> that was awkward. All right. <laughs> So why don't we start off by uh, getting to know your organization a little bit. So Miriam, could you tell us the history of Freedom House? Um, first of all, thank you for having us here. Uh, Freedom House uh, is a very recent uh, nonprofit organization. About 18 months ago, our founder, Jada M, and her husband um, were learning about trafficking and decided that they really wanted to do something substantial to help the community. And they ha uh, Jada had gone through a kind of a miraculous healing process. Um, she had been beset with migraines pretty much her whole life, but had received healing and just decided, yeah, I'd like to do something very positive with my life and give back. So um, they were learning about trafficking, as I said, in their church community. And... Uh, got started on the idea of a shelter because there are very few shelters for human trafficking victims in the entire country. To put in perspective, Freedom House is the sixth uh, such shelter in the country, in the entire country. Um, so basically, one thing led to another. Uh, Jada was able to secure some private funding uh, to get going on the idea. She um, hired a program director and a case manager. Uh, she purchased a property, renovated it, and basically now, 18 months later, Freedom House is set to open in five days. Wow. So it's been quite a ride, <laughs> and it's been thrilling for all of us involved, and yeah, we're just thankful to be part of the community and to be here tonight. Thank you. And what types of services and uh, activities does Freedom House have? So Freedom House is going to provide up to 18 months of transitional shelter for adult victims of human trafficking. And we really want to take a holistic approach to serving these victims. So we're going to partner very heavily with um, community-based organizations such as SAGE, uh, Standing Against Global Exploitation based in the city, and Asian Pacific Islander Legal Outreach where they'll receive free legal services. And um, let's see. Uh, partner with other medical providers and such to give um, kind of a kind of 360, 360 uh, view of care for these people. Okay, and then for those people that are interested in becoming a volunteer for Freedom House, what kind of opportunities does Freedom House have? So we have a lot of opportunities, um, both kind of long-term and short-term. Um, because our survivors are going through just so much in terms of trauma and emotional distress, we do ask that uh, volunteers who are interested in coming to the house and working with survivors go through our 40-hour training. And that's going to be offered, I think, about twice a year. And it's um, going to give you a view of the trafficking situation from the legal standpoint, uh, the psychological, emotional health standpoint, um, the medical standpoint, the legal, if I didn't say that already. Um, so we just finished our first training class. We had about 15 volunteers. And because the training is free, we ask our volunteers to uh, sign up to volunteer 120 hours for the next year. And um, we had people from age 21 to retirees, uh, mostly women, but there was some men, um, all nationalities, all kind of colors. And um, yeah, we were really excited. We had speakers from the FBI, from ICE, from uh, SAGE, um, 
the International Trauma Network, just a really great cadre of people to speak on the, pro, uh, on the problem and kind of educate our volunteers on what they can really do. Yeah. Fantastic, thank you. I guess next, Sheila. Sheila Rivera is from Asian, American, Asian Americans for Recovery Services. Could you tell us a little bit about your organization? Um, Asian American Recovery Services is um, an organization that was started in 1985, so we've been around for a while. Um, we, have, uh, we provide services to San Francisco, San Mateo, and Santa Clara County uh, counties. And we do treatment. We have residential programs. Uh, we, basically, we really want to... Um, uh, sorry, we really want to decrease the incidence and impact of substance abuse and substance use in, in just the, in all of our, our communities and all of our families and neighborhoods. Um, we provide a variety of services. We have counselors, social workers in um, juvenile hall. Pr in, um, we serve um, youth that are in probation. Um, we also serve youth that are um, um, in school and um, we provide services to both adults and youth. Uh, we have also uh, prevention uh, programs, like one of our biggest programs is, uh, or most popular ones is called Sister to Sister. And Sister to Sister is basically just an all-girl conference where we invite a lot of different um, young women from throughout the Bay Area and they come and they do get workshops and uh, lots of different things. They get prizes and it's just a really fun day for them. Um, and then one of our other prevention programs is, which is what I'm here to talk about today is called um, Aim and Achieve Mentoring Program. It's our mentoring program. Oh good, please tell us about this. Um, so uh, the, our mentoring program has been around for three years. It's a two part program. Uh, we, during the school year, we actually have an after school program where we bring in high school youth and they do group mentoring. Uh, and we found that that was just really like highly Get, uh, positively impacted all of the like the youth that were involved because it was youth that they could relate to and um, youth that had gone to their schools before. Um, and the second part of our program is actually a community-based program. So whereas in the after-school program we have our uh, group mentoring, uh, the community base is one-on-one, -on -one, where we would uh, where we would pair up our volunteers with a younger brother or younger sister, which is great because basically you get, like we assign you a little brother or little sister that has very similar interests that, that you do. Um, and so this way you have absolute, like almost complete control of what you end up doing with your mentee. Um, and that's, uh, that's great. So if you like just wanted to play basketball with them, you can just do that. If you wanted to go out to the library with them, you can do that. And we provide lots of support to our mentors. We make sure that they know, um, you know what a mentor is and what a mentor isn't. A mentor isn't a parent. You can't, they can't ask you for money like every time they see you. They <laughs> <laughs> And like you know, they can't expect you to you know to pay for everything. We try to make sure that the ex the experience is positive without costing the mentor money. Um, we try to make sure that it's a positive experience that shows that you can just have fun just being with somebody else and um, you know talking to them about different things. And if there's a problem that comes up, you have the staff to support you and that constantly you know that will call you and ask you how things are going. Um, the commitment would be four hours a month, and that could look like whatever. It could be two hours. Um, every two weeks, um, it could be four hours in one go. But we also ask that you like make sure you keep in contact with them. And so it's, it's a it's a very supportive network. Um, and we also ask that the mentors connect with the parents too. So it uh, provides a strong support network for the youth. Awesome. Thank you very much.